This week, we finish the shelving for the pantry, Garen builds the barn door rail system for the future pantry door, and Bryson tunes up his Bronco. I threw some trim on the front door and then I headed over to the hoop barn. Right now we're painting all of the support structure for the shelving units inside the pantry. That's an interesting color. Yeah, it's the same color as the walls. I guess it looks more purple out there. It does look a little more purple out here, doesn't it? <laughs> we're gonna be moving all this stuff out of this closet so Dad can get in there and start building the shelves and stuff for it. All this has got to go. Alright, let's do it. All cleared out. Ready for some cabinets and all sorts of fun stuff. I'm at the stage now where I've laid out all the lines of where the shelves are going to go. Well, the next step is, is to start putting up my ledger boards so we have something to lay those shelves on. Gary is on one of the last steps of the kitchen. I'm excited to get this room. He's got all his rails and the shelves will sit on. He's got a place now that he's gonna be putting the flour grinder, the bread machines, there's places for the mixers. There'll be food in here. And, oh, I have a place for all my little, the pink hammers and the pink. All, all the, the nice ones we all rob. <laughs> <laughs> yes. These shelves too are gonna be shallow. You'll be able to easily see what things are on the shelves because like right now, this has been our temporary one. It's hard to find things. So it'll be nice that those will be really shallow, you know, like they're gonna be about this width. So, pretty excited about this coming together. Cool. All right, it's time to do a little bit of a tune up on the Bronco. There's this weird ticking noise, which is coming, I believe, from this side. Kind of right in there. I think it's like a loose lifter or something. I was told by family members who are very good at working on cars, like my uncle and stuff, that you're supposed to take and put some ATF uh, fluid. You're supposed to add it to your engine, and it's supposed to help get any sticky lifters that are in your engine unstuck. Figured I'd also do a spark plug change too. Let's start the oil drain process. All right, now that that's draining, I'm gonna work on spark plugs. All right, you can't really see what's going on, but down there, somewhere, there we go. I'm doing the spark plug. There's six of these to do. Pull one out and see what happens. All right, let's see what it looks like. Oh, not bad, not bad at all. There's someone already did a tune-up on this guy. But, hey, I've already got everything here, so. Might as well just do another one on it. Ooh, but I got something kind of fun. So, I have this borescope camera. It's got a little camera on this end and it connects to your phone and you can stick it down little holes and stuff. It's got like a little light on it and everything. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick this down the cylinder and see what the cylinder is all about. the old filter off. This is the new one. You can clearly see that, that those are not the same. Still should fit. Time to put new oil in. All right, 
ATF fluid going in. All right, got spark plugs in, oil change with a quart of ATF fluid, new oil filter. I think that's it. See how this baby runs, huh? Whoa. Working? Listen to it. Sounds good, huh? Sounds amazing. Doesn't it? <laughs> Hopefully the tick will go away. We'll see. We just got the mounting up for the shelves. Now it's time to move over and start actually cutting the shelf pieces and getting those figured out. Yep, Bryson and I were making some decisions on the size of these shelves. 12 inches and 24 inches on the far end. So I guess the trick to that is, is that if you need out of a four by eight sheet of plywood and you want 12 inch shelves, you can't cut them exactly 12 inches or the last one will be three eighths of an inch off because of the width of the saw blade. I do centers, 12 foot centers. That takes a 16th off of each side and they are all pretty much the same. I work in metric and you work in standard, that's fine. You know, we should invent our own system. <laughs> <laughs> How would you develop the measurement for that? The size of your nose? Well, we My nose is approximately one nose. Half of a nose, three quarters well, you, of a nose. You know what? We go in olden days and start measuring by cubits. And those that had long arms, so you had longer cubits. No problem. Got this bolt Pulling together the iron so I can put the edging on. We're only doing it on the outside, I guess, because it's only where it's needed. It's the only place showing. You love to see it. Go poke it in the hole. Alright. Like I mentioned before, after we had visited Kentucky, I went on this search for sprouted goods because I, I hadn't been looking for products for quite a while because we kind of got in our own little rut. I'm really surprised at how sprouted has really grown quite a bit. We found sprouted oats. So excited when we saw this. And you look at the ingredients and that's all that's in it. So that means they took the oat berry, they sprouted it, and then they rolled it out. Pretty exciting. I was so excited to have oatmeal. I haven't had oatmeal in years because oatmeal is just something that I, I can't really Really do. It's a complex carb and of course sprouting breaks up into a simple carb and that's what this is. It's a simple carb. So we've been eating we oatmeal have, we have. with our sprouted toast yes. and it's just so fun to eat oatmeal. I love it. This actually is just a little sweeter because when a plant, when it sprouts, it gets a touch sweeter. Garen and Ellie have been making no bakes. You know how you put oats inside of oat no bakes and he said the cookies are wonderful because they are that little extra kick of sweetness too. What did you think of yours? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was good, very good. It's very tasty, very oatmeal-y. Now, do you notice a difference? Because you've been eating <clears throat> regular oatmeal. So what, is there a difference? There's more flavor, more the oat flavor, which is good. That's what we want. So. Mm. I just did a search on sprouted oats and bamo. Ooh. I had to buy them in bulk. They're it's also not... organic and yeah. pictures of people on the back. You just never know. Are they happy? They're uh, probably happy like us. They're holding oats. Oh, okay. Yes, if you're, see? Yeah. 100% oh, yeah. transparency. <laughs> Transparent on this side. Oh, there it is. Again, we're not sponsored by these guys, <coughs> no. but and there might be other rolled oats out there too that are sprouted. But very exciting to be uh, eating oatmeal again. Yeah, huh. Hel healthy. Yeah. This is an old flour mill that I use, and this mill right here had a hand crank on it. This was a different flour mill. This was a stone grinder. The grinding part broke, but the engine was good. Gary just took the engine, turned it sideways here, and then the guys hooked this up to it so that I could have this automatic because to do it by hand obviously takes a long time. But that's something him and the boys did years ago. He's gonna change that configuration on it now when we move it. But anyway, that's just been a beauty for us. I prepared to put in this section here that's gonna be for the wheat grinder. 
and uh, getting ready to build a cabinet for that here in a little bit. I used to have it on this great big old long fan belt. So what I want to do now is shorten that up moving our generator section here a little bit closer so that I can compact this thing. And also too, I'll be permanently installing it to the shelf as opposed to last time I had it built portably where we could actually move it around. We're getting an upgrade. Uh, we had this old rocker switch that we were using on the grinder and now we're gonna actually get to a, a regular old light switch. That Everything happens with a light switch in our family. We get our ATVs running, our airless painter we got running with one of these. That's These are a lot of these. He bolted it right onto this. Yeah, so it's all part of it now. I really like that. It looks so cute, doesn't it? Yeah. Easy to clean up too, it's on the Formica stuff. Is that good yeah. Formica? I uh, know it's a vinyl. Okay. Is that the same stuff you used when you did the concrete countertops? Uh, yes it is, melamine. Okay. Uh, so it's the same kind of stuff. It's a vinyl. Oh, plastic. What you think, Diesel? Oh. That's Azalea. Chomp. <laughs> <laughs> Sam is not having it. <laughs> hey! Ready to go to work? Fun stuff today, huh? Yeah. Hey, we're over at Garen's today and we're uh, we're working on a, a cool project. Just remember the pantry thing we just got built up. We want to be able to put some doors on that, but I didn't want to put like a standard door in there. Something cool. So we're going to be doing, what kind of doors are they? They're sliding barn doors? Sliding barn doors! Only that won't look like a barn. We're gonna do some art with it. But with that, instead of buying the, the fancy stuff for the barn door equipment, we're gonna make our own. Yeah, it's really expensive yeah. to get barn door hinges. So I think we're about half the cost right now. Yeah, we're using chewing gum and baling wire and super glue. We have seven feet of square tubing. We're gonna be cutting in half and welding some hangers on to make our track out of. That was a lot of cutting. Yeah, that was a lot of cutting. But it looks good now, yes. for channels. By the way, you don't recognize this tool because it did not come out of your bucket, so. I better not have. No, I didn't come out of your <laughs> bucket. Uh... For the door rollers, we're gonna be using some two inch flat stock and welding that kind of into an L shape with the caster on the small part of the L and the door hanging off of the large part of the L. Liking it? Yeah. It's a winner. I think so. All right, I'm working on welding up all the pieces we cut up. Little L's and we're gonna put little triangles on them. And then these wheels, we're gonna weld like this on here. And then I'm gonna drill a couple holes in here. And then the door will bolt right underneath it here. The track will go in between the door and the wheel. And that should, I think, work pretty well. Nice, very cool. Not cleaned up yet, but work, huh? Making the uh, mounts for the rail, right? Yep. And these mounts welded on here. We just have a little flanges that are going to come up on off of our rail, just to bolt it to the wall. Time to weld these two halves of our track together. That way we can get the rest of the flanges on for mounting it to the wall. A little hokey of a setup, but I think this will do pretty good to get it pretty straight. You're on the last weld? Yep, last little Alrighty. section. Woohoo! Okay, we got all the fabricating done. Now it's, I guess it's your turn to yeah. go home and install it all, huh? Install it, got a little bit of paint to squirt on it. Oh, yeah, I think that, and then uh, we have to build the doors, but we at least have the hardware set up. Yeah. So thanks, Garen. Appreciate you. Yeah, no problem. All right. Just a smidgen more out of this one side. Oh. 
Do you do the white stuff after you size them? Is no, that I, I size it and make sure it fits right, then I put the white edging on. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. The install was kind of fun too. Not only did the shelves go in, kind of interesting because I had a trapezoid room to put them in, so not each shelf was 90 degree cuts, which made a little more work. We also put in a, a cabinet in there too so that we could place the flour mill in there and the uh, bubbler for the water. Cool. Yeah. Last shelf going in. Just came right at the last shelf. It looks nice, Pops. You wanna hold that end up for me, please? Yeah, just hold it right there. Awesome, honey. Oh my gosh, look at all these shelves. This is amazing. And then what, now these purple boards go in too? Yeah, I think they're little braces. Braces, okay. Is this exciting for you or is it just exciting for me? Oh, it's exciting. Can you imagine having this much space, Gary? Yeah, it's gonna be really cool. <laughs> I like that it's more optimized space-wise. We used to have it on like a rolling thing. We would just roll it around wherever we wanted, which was nice during that time, but it was very, very loud. Yes, that thing was really loud. Ear bleeding loud, especially if you have to stand by it and feed it. <laughs> and with you your know. ear next to it, that's the yeah. hardest part. I'd put put earmuffs on, yeah, I'm earmuffs. gonna go do the mill now. How do you feel about the difference though between the amount of food that we have in our current food cupboard to, into this new one? I think it's gonna look very skimpy. We're gonna have to get more food. <laughs> but that's the deal, we have to now buy more food to put all that in there, that makes sense. You think we buy all that bread and freeze it? Oh no, we just do it to fill up the cupboard. Make ourselves feel better. I do, I feel better already. I think it's gonna turn out really good. I think um, everybody's gonna love it. I was gonna put all kinds of bracing across here, and but I did take a good look at the shelves and they're so sturdy, it's just like, I don't think we're gonna need it. Less is better anyway, because they would just get in the way of putting things on shelves. Yeah. And we'll keep an eye on them, they're shagging. Are you happy with it? Very happy. I love it. It's gonna work perfectly. Thanks, honey. You did good work. Thanks. <laughs> Well, that wraps up this week. The t-shirt design of the week is Switch It Up. If you'd like to get this on a t-shirt, sweatshirt, handbag, apron, mug, all kinds of fabulous products that we have over on our shop page, as well as all of the other designs that we've done in the past, you can check out the link down in the description. We really appreciate you being a part of our family. We look forward to hanging out with you on Monday, which is our audio only podcast. Great for if you're doing the dishes, doing the laundry, mowing the lawn, crafting something awesome. On Wednesday, we have our single subject recaps, and then we'll see you back again here on Friday. Bye. That means if someone built a cubit, like house, it would sometimes be bigger and smaller based on who building. lived in it. <laughs> That's a benefit though. If you wanted a door, approximately seven cubits, or six cubits high, you would just measure six cubits and you're a tall person, you can get right in. Well, true. Our family moved from the city to the country. Thanks for taking part in our adventure. We have new videos every Friday evening. If you would like to help us out, you can like this video, share it, subscribe, or support us on Patreon. See the links in the description.